There we go. Hi. Good morning. So, unlike your previous speakers, uh, I really have no credentials other than the fact that I work at Red Hat. But uh, we happen to be a sponsor, and they asked me to give this GitOps talk. So I'm here today to talk to you about the future uh, of GitOps. Uh, I've worked with Christian Noe for quite a long time, so he can maybe vouch for the fact that I know at least one thing. So a number of years ago, a lot of interesting technological things happened kind of around the same time. We had this birth and emergence of containers and other container-like technologies, and then um, Google and Red Hat and many other organizations came together to work on a scheduler to deal with those technologies. And so the power of all these things combined gave us this, more YAML. Um, no, but in reality what they gave us was a declarative way to decide to run workloads. And through the power of this type of YAML definition and Kubernetes, what we get is the way to ask sort of for workload to be run within a pool of resources, right? Give me this container image that I've built myself previously that is available in some registry somewhere. Make sure this many number of them are running uh, and keep them running for me, please. Right? Uh, and so this was great. Everybody liked this so far. And so when this happened, you know, we had this expectation of greatness, right? We're going to make this wonderful dish of our cool applications and everything. But then reality strikes and we realize that, oh God, this is pretty terrible. Um, running Kubernetes is not easy. So again, you know, cool things happened. Along came these various technological providers, Red Hat included, and we said, hey, we understand running Kubernetes is pretty tough. We're gonna make it easy for you. We're gonna handle this quote unquote infrastructure and make it available as a service. And that was great, except it, it doesn't really solve all your problems. It just gives you this stable platform on where you can run things, but now you actually have to run things. Uh, and so we have real work to be done now. We've got this Kubernetes infrastructure. We've got to do things with it, right? We've got to configure it. We've got to, to uh, um, actually make and run our workloads, keep them going, and we want to be able to maybe audit and roll back and et cetera. So for all of you who are here, obviously you're interested in GitOps, along came Argo and Flux and these other GitOps-like technologies that said, hey, we will take that declaration of desired workload, if you will, uh, and we'll make sure that that happens. And if we detect any change, we'll make sure to reconcile that for you. So in this case, we've got this Nginx workload that we want to have three of. And no matter what happens in the cluster, Argo is going to make sure that that stays uh, the case. This was great. So Kubernetes was doing things. We had our workloads configured. We have all this stuff going. But not everything that comes in Kubernetes is exactly what I want. And so this concept of a CRD, a custom resource definition, came about that enables us to extend the Kubernetes API. I don't want a pod, I don't want a deployment, I want a chicken sandwich, right? And, and please make that happen in my cluster. And so when you combine CRDs with this thing called the operator framework, an operator is just a controller pod that runs in a cluster that looks at these CRDs and says, okay, I know what to do with that chicken sandwich. I can help instantiate one of those for you. And so now when we combine CRDs and Kubernetes, we really can start to build some superpowers into our environment. And if we use this continued example with Argo being sort of the GitOps tool here, um, we can have this new thing, which is a stream, uh, sorry, a Kafka, which Kubernetes has no idea about out of the box, right? We've defined it with a CRD. And we have this operator pod that understands how to deploy Kafka components based on this simple definition of a Kafka. And through the power of Argo and GitOps, we can make sure that those Kafka instances are always running as intended and as desired. And so now things are getting really interesting because nothing says that those operators have to interact with only things that live inside your Kubernetes environment. So through the power of something like Crossplane, you can have a definition of an S3 bucket which ends up living outside of the cluster in a completely unrelated set of infrastructure in the cloud somewhere. And so really, what does the future actually hold? What can we do now? Well, we can think of Git or source control as being this arbitrary interface into anything as a service, anything on demand. So we can envision an operator that does whatever and some company says, hey, here's this YAML spec for how to get one of our things. I mean, we're in, in the land of cars here in Detroit, right? Like, that could be a car that you write your little YAML file for, and then, like, an hour later, that car appears, or whatever it is, right? 
So the, the, the future really, in a weird way, is declarative. And we see this in, in many of the ways that we interact with technology and things today. But this is kind of like an interesting view into what might be possible in, in the near future. And the reality is that it's already here in this type of example, right? So whatever you can envision in your own infrastructures, whether that's inside your own premises or outside, um, you know, with an operator and a CRD, you can pretty much do whatever it is that you want. So that's, that's the end. That's my five minutes. Okay. I don't know who's next, but here we go.